What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 472 of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk podcast, Hot Tags of the Week, where we'll be breaking down some of the current events, rumors, news, gossip, and other things that have happened in the world of pro wrestling over the past few days that we feel like talking about. I'm your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always is Robert E. Felice. Tony, how we doing? We're doing. How you doing? I'm doing. I got myself some gabagoo. <laughs> Woke up this morning. <laughs> Oh, how are you all doing out there in viewer land? Hopefully you're doing great. Leave a comment. Tell us how great you're doing. Leave a comment about your thoughts on the hot tags. You know, chime in. Tell us what you're thinking about all these topics that we're going to get into. Because we got a couple. We're going to talk uh, an update to TLC. We're going to talk about a new show in the works. Somebody who may have had their return ruined. We got a baby. We got whatever. <laughs> all sort of the plates. Uh, things all over the place, I should say. And you should know the score by now as far as the usual quick plugs that I do, but just very quickly, if you don't, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell, hit that like button, hit the share button, hit the applause button, uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, go all over the place here and do the same things you do with everybody else. Hit the join button if you want to support the YouTube channel, be part of the membership side of things over there, which is the same as the Patreon, patreon.com slash moment. Go ahead and check that out. Even if you donate, oh my God, I can't talk today. Even if you donate a dollar, it is greatly appreciated, but $10 and up gives you access to the Patreon exclusive episodes. Same thing with the YouTube side of things. If you like that more so than the Patreon, check out fanboysanonymous.com because later on we're going to be doing an actual podcast about that. So we will talk about that again in a moment or so. But just to get that kind of out of the way here, and obviously if you're listening to us on the platforms that do not have the comment section like Spotify and Amazon Music, pop on over to the website itself or go to the YouTube channel and leave a comment there. Pick up some merchandise on Tee Public and Redbubble as well. If you're interested in any more information about any of that, leave a comment below and ask and I will fill you in on more. Or you can just start clicking around. I pretty much make all that stuff self-explanatory as it is. If you click on merchandise shop on the websites, you'll find the merchandise shops, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, Patreon, all that stuff's pretty straightforward, too. Let's just get into the hot tags because we have two podcasts we're going to be doing tonight. So. <laughs> uh, let's talk about this one that we typically, again, don't go through too much information about. But it's just something nice to announce, which is that Cody and Brandy Rhodes have announced that they're going to be having a kid next year. So congrats. That's awesome. Like, I love this couple. They seem so genuinely in love with one another, so supportive of one another. And I, I love it. I love love. And they're going to have a baby. And sure, I've made this joke off air other places, but I'll say it with you because you'll laugh. Uh, it's another Brandy Rhodes storyline down the drain. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jade Cargill thing's not working, right? <laughs> but I don't care because this is awesome and they're going to be great parents. I'm sure they're, Cody is fighting all temptation to name the child Grogu. And, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I just I love this. I really do. Congrats to them. <laughs> I think it's funny that Renee had said, can we talk about how good looking that baby's going to get growing up to be? Like, <laughs> it was, uh, Cody and Brandy are two very attractive people. Like they, they're just good looking. Yeah. So good genetics for this kid. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I mean, unless it skips a generation and it just comes out looking like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, son of a son of a plumber. Son, no, it's the son, son of a son of a son of a plumber. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait a minute. Son of a son of a son of a plumber. Son of a son of a son of a plumber. Uh, boy. Otherwise, it'll be the daughter of a son. Uh, of that's son true. Of a son. <laughs> <laughs> Well, congrats to the happy couple. Um, let's talk about Melina. She was rumored to be going back to WWE, and then she did the typical thing that everybody does, where they go, no, uh that's not happening. I don't know where you're no, hearing about that. she literally went like, and even if I was, why would you want it spoiled? Yeah. Like, okay, so, Melina, so you're coming. <laughs> so you're coming to WWE, and you're just mad that somebody spoiled it. Well, now we have a little bit more information about that, and that is coming from Johnny Fairplay. Talking about how he's friends with Robbie E and that the original plan that was nixed was that Melina was going to be a part of the Robert Stone brand in NXT, but she ended up needing surgery and that kind of put the kibosh on that. Now, 
afterward, he had something where he's saying that that's not necessarily true, what he was saying? Is that what it was? Uh, he was basically just trying to correct the way that some people ran with the story and said, you know, this is definitely going to happen. He just, he had the conversation with Bradley. I don't personally see it. Like, I think it would have been a misuse of Molina. Molina's main roster. Molina was main roster 20 years ago. That's that's not right. Molina was main roster 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Robert Stone thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. Uh, I mean, they've done weirder things. Can Robert Stone just get a Leah on television and, like, focus on that? I know Robert Stone's not actually a real manager, but, like, you know, if he was, it'd be a pretty bad one. <laughs> it's just one of those things that I... I don't know. I don't I don't really think that that makes a whole lot of sense and maybe not necessarily the best uh source when it comes to just like somebody who heard somebody who's heard somebody that kind of a thing. But maybe, I mean, I don't know. I do think though the fact that this is even in discussion is something that kind of points to the idea that that's probably the only way one I of would those accept topics. that is if Robert Stone moves up to the main roster. Yeah, and but, I don't think that that would happen with the. Uh... But like he, but like Molina doesn't need a mouthpiece. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. It seems like. Uh. All for nothing, you know. Like, I don't buy it. Sorry, sorry, Johnny Fairplay. Yeah. Fairplay and all, but like, I don't buy it. So. We don't know what's happening there, but we also know that there's possibly a second NXT television show coming. Now, the idea behind it is that it's kind of going to do what we've been actually talking about for the past few months, with which was they bought out Evolve. They have Gabe Sapolsky in the mix, and it seems like the Capital Wrestling Center is the perfect place to do this, that they want to do a developmental show. Because at this point, NXT no longer feels quite like a developmental program. And the phrasing, I, and I don't like this. I know that you don't like it either. The phrasing that's been used is NXT for NXT. That's which, stupid. Which is very dumb. I don't like that at all. I get where they're going with that. And I hope that they don't think that that's catchy enough to be like, well, we're going to, you know, use that going forward. It's NXT for NXT, because that's not going to get people tuning in. That's not. I mean, we could talk a lot about a lot of these things. and We will talk about some of this, but they can have. You know what, though? This is stupid. I'm prefacing this by saying it's stupid. They should really should do a Royal Rumble in NXT and just call it uh, like, you know, how they do King of the Hill. It should be. King of Capitol Hill, because they're in the Capitol Wrestling Center. I <laughs> think that just occurred to me right now, and it's dumb, but I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> I do like the idea of a show that's like this, if they get rid of some other type of programming, because I really like, it's too much as it is, and if you add NXT India, and potentially NXT Japan, and you add another show, nobody can do it. There's nobody that really would want to watch this much wrestling content. Between all the network stuff and all the other types of shows, just adding another half hour or an hour or whatever to it, you gotta just kill two or five live and replace I, it with that. Like I will make the argument right now that maybe they could have done this ten years ago. Like when the wrestling world was void and barren of anything on TV, you could have done it ten years ago. Mm -hmm. But now there's so much wrestling. And everybody can watch anything they want. Now is not the time for 50 WWE brands when your main one has its lowest numbers of all time. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into we're that. We're going to sure. get into that. I very much am going to reiterate the same thing I've mentioned before on multiple articles and multiple podcasts. This should be called Stomping Grounds. If they're going to do it out of the Performance Center... It's just going to be Evolve. Like, let's just fucking stop. It'll be Evolve. Like, it, it's just Evolve. It's just Evolve, but now on the WWE Network. Between Evolution as a stable and Evolution as a one-time pay-per-view and the women's Evolution, I don't want them to use the Evolve 
name Why? again. We're, we're evolving. I, it's just too much of the same thing, you know? Okay, but, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. ECW. Evolve Championship Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, it's great. We'll bring in the ECW crowd. Uh, can we get the ECW guys back? How many of them are around? <laughs> you know, like, I I want it to be called Stomping Grounds. I want it to replace 205 Live. I want and I want it. Thing. I'm hoping Wrestling Inc. got the report wrong. And Sorry. that might be true, too. You know, we might find out that that's one of those things where maybe it was just tentatively suggested and not necessarily going to be going through with anything. Or maybe it was just like we're going to reshift the NXT writing team. Yeah, it could be that too. Like, or it could be one of those things that's not really a show show, but it's more so like Breaking Ground was, where they do some kind of like a documentary series or whatever. It seems like the implication is that it's just basically like another wrestling show, which if that's the case, then I want it to be called Stomping Grounds. I want it to be in place of 205 Live, and I want it to air on the network. Can we talk about NXT India real quick? Anything new about that? Uh, just I, I just want to get your thoughts. Uh, Kavita Devi, Jinder Mahal, Indu Share for inaugural champions. Yes, like <laughs> it does seem right. Like Jeet Rama. Uh... What are we doing here? I understand. Listen, don't get me wrong. I understand this because if you've ever been, I don't. This is not a knock. If you've ever been on any wrestling site ever. There's a huge chance that a majority of the commenters or even a majority of the writers are of Indian descent, right? Right. There's a huge market there. But, like, why? Why right now? You know, like, why right now? Why not, like, when you open a performance center over there and they all know how to work? Why are you going to do the Jinder Mahal brand? <laughs> Can you, like, I'm, I wish I was being funny. Can you, like, answer me that? Why? Are we doing this? They really should make him the first champion. Somebody asked me, they're like, well, what do you think about Kali being the commissioner? It's like, why would oh, you God, put a no. microphone in his hand? No, please no. <laughs> Doesn't he run a wrestling school? He does. So, is he's he like taking classes there? <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going to be the feeder system. <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine, like, instead of Hell in a Cell, they just have Food and Javi prison every night. Just have Food and Javi right. prison. That's great. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, let's talk about those ratings. Because now we know Monday Night Raw had its lowest ratings ever. Mm -hmm. And you, the USA Network is apparently asking for edgier content, that they want more adult-oriented material, but not on the sexy side of things but the violence we want that which they want a dark and violent show according to reports by alex mccarthy so i like alex alex is a respectable reporter this is i wonder if this came out before and that's why they did raw underground i would not put it past them to have said this months ago as like we think you should try to do something a little bit darker and see how it works and then that was WWE's pitch as one of the things. Well, we could do this. And it's, you know, it's kind of like it'll bring in the UFC crowd and whatever, which I don't blame it if WWE did pitch it like that, because if they pitched it. Well, here's the thing. I wrote an article in E-Wrestling News. Check it out That's if you're interested. Line, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wear yesterday or the day before, whenever I wrote it, my days are blurring together. Yeah, I, I actually read that one because it came up on my timeline as. WWE doesn't learn, and the raw ratings are going to be better. <laughs> yeah, because like, I just... Gee, I wonder who wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to a point where I was just like, you know what, can we all just stop and fucking acknowledge that this isn't going to change a goddamn thing? The original title was it, nothing... Uh, wait, it was, there was like four titles. One of them was, Monday Night Raw's low ratings aren't going to change a goddamn thing. And then I'm like, I probably shouldn't put that in the title. So then it was, uh, Monday Night Raw ratings won't change anything, and you know it. And I'm like, that's a little wordy. And like, <laughs> so I kind of went around there. But I just sort of decided on a whim to write up an article just complaining about how this idea is getting some people to think that things are going to change. And it's not. Because the long and short of this article is WWE has a systemic problem of they're not stupid. Like, they know what they're doing in some ways. They're just very stubborn. And they know that they're stubborn. 
And that's what leads to never changing anything because the way that people act when they have that stubborn mentality, whether you're, you know, trying to lose weight or you're, uh, you smoke cigarettes and you're trying to get off of that or whatever, it's this idea of there's like, there's not a problem. And then when you go, yeah, there is, then they go, yeah, well, there is a problem, but it's not my fault. And you go, yeah, but it is your problem. And then they go, yeah, but here's a quick fix. And then you go, that didn't fix it. And then you go, all right, well, I don't want to do anything. Because so, that's what happens. So here's what I enjoy about this report. If, you is, if USA is bitching, they're going to do something. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, they're going to do something. Now, I see everybody going back to how two years ago, they stood, they stood in the ring. It was like two years ago yesterday, actually. They stood in the ring and said, we're listening, we hear you, we're going to change. And I've seen two sides to this story. One being, obviously, nothing changed, right? And the other being, well, that was the WrestleMania where they did give you, in one night, Kofi Kingston, Becky Lynch, and Seth Rollins, and then you immediately turned on Seth Rollins, Kofi Kingston, and Becky Lynch. Now, I, I can understand that. I can understand both sides there. But, like, I kind of just want an attitude moment where Vince McMahon or maybe somebody, you know, younger stands on the screen and goes, hey, our show sucks. We're going to (laughs) take from shows like, uh, give me a popular show of the day, The Mandalorian. Mandalorian, which we will talk about. (laughs) The Mandalorian. And we're going to take some cartoons like Rick and Morty. And we're going to basically, we're going to have a better show. We're sorry. And then just start having a better show. I mean, we've run down this path a thousand times, so we didn't don't need to kind of repeat ourselves for the millionth time. But it is a problem of quality, just quality. Like, first of all, it's too long. It's the too shows long. are the shows are way too long for WWE to have the patience and put in the effort and to not be, become lazy. They they very clearly are. Like SmackDown tonight sucked and that's because they didn't have two hours worth of material for this episode of smackdown they clearly thought fuck it it's tlc this weekend we'll give them a tag title match instead of putting it on tlc because maybe people will tune in for a tag title match and what else and then they go i don't know bianca and bailey and then they go all right that eats up like 30 to 40 minutes what do we do for the rest of it carmella can talk (laughs) Carmella can talk and Kevin Owens can fight with Jey Uso like six times and talk and Roman Reigns can talk and Jey Uso can talk. And it's like, so you, all you're doing is so this was I a like... two hour long promotion for TLC and the promotion wasn't, we're going to give you such good material that you want to watch the next show. It was just TLC's coming up because Carmella's promo. I heard uh, some people talking about like, oh, I can't wait to see this champagne toast. They call it a champagne toast because it's the same as any other fucking thing. It's the KO show. It's Ms. TV. It's just, hey, that's the name of me grabbing a microphone and saying I'm going to beat that person at the pay-per-view. It's nothing different. You well, know? So the champagne toast, I like I like the presentation of the character, right? Even though um, I don't like the fact that this is the character. I do like, I think she's pulling it off well. Um, I'm not crazy about the fact that she cut a promo for 10 minutes like Sasha is going to lose her temper and I said oh cool she's going to go to her into one of those if you get disqualified you lose the title stipulations and they didn't even go there maybe they'll announce it on the bump though because they announce everything on digital yeah we have to talk about an update to TLC too but that's like even that they didn't update anything else. We don't know what the kickoff match is because they can't even do that on a pay-per-view pre-show, mm-hmm. like they, uh, the go-home show for a pay-per-view because they don't want to do that because they want to put it on social media. And WWE has to get out of this mentality of they'll watch it because it's WWE because it's clearly not happening. They're they're doing this thing where they're obsessed with digital. Yeah, right? they are very much harping on that stuff. And it's sort of like a... 
like a instant gratification type of thing. Like we got this many views on YouTube. Yeah. But how many people are watching the actual shows that the networks are paying you the bulk of your money from? And part of the reason why, and you are somebody who does this too. So, you know, full well, why would you want to watch a two hour episode of SmackDown where the majority of it is literally can be summed up, which I did on my reports as throughout the night, Kevin Owens and Jey Uso fought. And you go, okay, well, there's 40 minutes worth of material. And then you factor in commercial breaks and stuff. And you go, well, shit, if I really care, then I'll wait until it's over and I'll check out the GIFs that come up on Twitter. Or I'll check out the YouTube video that's three minutes long and I won't have to watch all the nonsense that goes around it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been harping on this on other podcasts. Like, if you're going to do this, you have to you have to stop making everything so readily available on YouTube and digital. You have to stop. They really should. And that's only one of the ways that they can fix this because they need to write better. Like you said, like you'd like to see them say, well, we'll take from shows that are popular today or whatever. One of the reasons those shows are popular is because they're just better written. Like they put more care and effort into it. Like we will talk about the Mandalorian on a fanboys podcast. And for anybody who's interested, Sasha Banks on this episode of the Mandalorian. So, Hey, if you are like, oh, I want even more talk about Sasha Banks and whatever, check out the Fanboys podcast, fanboysanonymous.com. It's going to be coming up. We're going to record it after the hot tag, so it'll be up by the time you're listening to this, most likely. But um, The Mandalorian is like, well, The Mandalorian's even better than the Star Wars movies have been recently, and that's because they put more effort into it. This episode got a perfect 10 from many outlets. Like, it's it's a good show. John it's, Favreau, man. And Dave Filoni, like, they know what they're doing, and they they sit there, they figure out what they want to do, and they tell it in a good story. And, you know, Kathleen Kennedy and them that they were working on the Star Wars movies before, they've admitted that they never had a plan. And it looks like they never had a plan because they set up a bunch of things and it went nowhere. And that's what WWE does. They don't have a plan, and they think, well, that's good enough. And then when people go, no, it's not, then they go, oh, what do you want from me? And it's like, I want you to do your job. Like, and, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I I do think that there's a contingency of people that are too hard on WWE and that, yes, are likely to change their minds as soon as WWE gives them the thing that they said they wanted. But I also think WWE has used that as an excuse to be lazy. Right. Like, it's... oh, well. It's a proven fact now that they're never going to be happy regardless. So fuck them. And how does that work out in the long run for WWE? Because if they say, well, those fans aren't going to be happy, so we're going to just do what we want. And the ratings show that people don't want what WWE wants. Then WWE just goes, okay, well, I want to do it my way. And if you stop supporting me, then I'll just go under. Because that's all it is. It's like analogy time. You go to a restaurant, they have steak on the menu, you order steak, you ask for it medium, medium well, they do a well done. You go, well, maybe it was just a fuck up one time. You go back again, you ask for a medium, you say, hey, last time, you know, I, I had this done and it was actually well done. And they go, oh, okay. And they give it to you well done. You go, I got to send it back. You know, I, you guys screw it up again. And then they go, fine, we'll make you another one. And they give it to you well done. You're never going back to that restaurant. Or at the very least, you're never ordering a steak from them again. And then that's on them because they fucked up a couple times. WWE, every week, every episode, if they don't deliver, their idea is, well, the next one will. And then the next one doesn't. And it's not like this is a brand new show where it's like, well, you know, maybe it took them until season two to get their stride. They've been doing this for decades. They know whether or not they've had a good show or a bad show. They just don't care that they've had bad shows for several years to the point that it's been two years now since Triple H, Stephanie, Shane, and Vince came out on television and said it's been long enough that we need to acknowledge that the shows have been bad. Two years after that point, so you're talking three years, if not four years, of them knowing that people aren't happy with the product. 
And what have they been changing? They they do the same thing every time. They go, well, we don't have Brock. And then you go, well, Brock didn't change the ratings. And you go, oh, yeah, he did, because when Brock showed up and he had that match, you see how the ratings bumped? And you went, yeah, for that one week. What was it beforehand and after when he wasn't there? And they go, well, that's... Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, that's not how that works. You can't make an argument by just saying, I don't want to listen, la, 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 la. You have to actually support your opinions and you actually have to argue your point of view. We know by now Brock Lesnar helps with ratings if Brock Lesnar is advertised because people want to see Brock Lesnar, but he doesn't make it from a 1.6 rating to a 3.10 or 3.1, that wouldn't be 3.10, uh, a 3.0 or a 3. Point fucking whatever, or a 9 point something, it doesn't happen. It just hasn't. You can go back and check out the ratings for every single episode for the past however many years. We got in 10 years of Brock Lesnar, he's never made it a 5 point whatever. And if that's the case, you can't use the excuse, well, we don't have Brock. And it's all of our superstars are not good enough to get people to pay attention. Well, then that's your fault, right? Because if you have hundreds of employees and you've never positioned any of them to be good enough stars, you mean to tell me that there's no stars in pro wrestling at all? You that's, can't... My, that's my Goldberg argument. That's like, everybody's like, oh yeah, the Goldberg would be great. Would it? Like, would it? If you really had to have Goldberg defeat mm -hmm. Roman Reigns, are you not just saying we don't have anybody? Right. And if you say that there's nobody in WWE that can be a popular enough star, then you either failed your roster or you literally hired everybody that you thought wouldn't be a star. That's stupid. And all the other stars are all the other companies. Come on. That doesn't happen that way. So you can't blame the stars. You got to blame the writing. If the writing was good enough, people would watch the show. And whenever they get hit with this kind of a thing with the low ratings, all they try to do is they play the, uh, the blame game where they say, well, you know, people don't like that they're watching a show with no fans. OK, well, what happened when the ratings were bad before the pandemic? And then they go, oh, well, that was a, uh, this problem. They'll go, you, go, you see, like, it was WrestleMania season, and we were about to get really good. You just don't know. Yeah, you're, you're not letting us do long-term storytelling. Okay, well, the last long-term storytelling that you do. Like, where they just go, oh, long-term. It's like, but Triple H has already clarified that your idea of long-term is just, like. Just stick with us forever. Yeah, like you That's basically see, what it is. Basically, their idea of long-term storytelling is you'll see, look at how Kofi Kingston is a former world champion. Wasn't that great? Long-term story? Yeah, and you're like, you didn't really book him all that well. And they go, yeah, but we could always say that he's a former world champion. And you're like, that's face value bullshit, you know? They are very much in the corporate speak company nonsense. Let me sell you a reason why you shouldn't abandon us, but it's really just what you want to hear type of business. And that doesn't help because that doesn't translate to people trusting your product anymore. At the end of the day, if people like your stuff, people will support it. And you might not get as popular as you want. Or you might not get as many sales as you want from not having the right word of mouth because marketing is a thing. Like, just flat out, like, there are restaurants that I don't even know about that have really good food because I just don't know about the restaurants. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there are TV shows to watch that I don't know are really good because I, in my circle... People haven't mentioned it or haven't had the right Apparently, advertisement or whatever. you never saw The Sopranos. Yeah, only saw one episode of The Sopranos. I know that people love it. I know how it ends. <laughs> you know, I know that kind of thing. But it's just been one of those things that I never got around to doing or whatever. That's that's mostly because I didn't have HBO. But, uh, like, I, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Love the show. I didn't watch it for however many seasons because the only ads that I had been seeing 
didn't show what the show was all about. It was just an ad of uh, two hunky looking uh, dudes that were muscular that were like grinding up on each other. And I'm like, oh, so this is a show about like uh, maybe like a strip club or something. Well, I'm not interested in that. Never had an idea that it was basically a worse group of people than the people in Seinfeld. And if I would have seen it like a commercial for that, then I probably would have watched the show years beforehand. That's, so that's a fault in the marketing department because they thought that that would be funny and edgy and whatever. And instead, it made me think it was about a completely different type of show. Or like, um, I was going to say, how do they even really, I'll say this. Like, I wasn't a big fan at first because I didn't get it. For what? Like, how about your mother? You know, yeah. like if, yeah. if I would have only seen commercials where it's just Barney being like, you know, legend wait for like that stuff is the yeah. show. I'm going to be awesome. It'd be like, okay, that, this character is probably exact, annoying. That is the exact ad, you know, where it's legendary. Awesome. And it's just that you don't fucking know. That's one of the deepest sitcoms to ever exist right in television and with wwe i feel like has wwe hit their simpsons point this is hard because they've existed a bit longer but not too much longer if you think about wrestlemania era i feel like wwe is obsessed with going yeah but where wwe you know stone cold steve austin and The Undertaker, just like The Simpsons will go, you know, hey, who needs the quickie mart? It's like, yeah, that was that that hasn't been you in the last 20 years. <laughs> so like, hey, how about that's uh, steamed hams, huh? And you're like, what, season six? <laughs> you know, like... yeah, exactly, though. That is where we're at, where it's like, hey, Family Guy is still on the air. Yeah, but it sucks. Mm -hmm. It's a parody of itself now. And WWE is a parody of itself at its best. And it's the type of thing that they are going to do nothing to fix because they don't want to. Ultimately, they don't want to. Because when you are, again, to use the analogies I mentioned earlier, like if you are a smoker, you know full well before you start smoking cigarettes that it's bad for you. You've learned plenty of information throughout school. You know that it's bad. But you do it anyway for whatever reason. I, not my thing. I never understood it. Whatever. Point being, I know so many people who smoke who you can tell them anything that they could hear that would convince them otherwise. And you can show them like, this is what's happening to your lungs. This is what's whatever. And they can go, yeah, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. And then you go, well, so why don't you stop? And they go, ah, it's hard. I think, and I don't want to, I don't want to stay too long on this, but I really think if you look at WWE from 80, from like Bruno San Martino days to Hogan days, huge aesthetic change, right? Like huge everything. We're going from, hello everyone, I'm Vince McMahon and this is Worldwide Wrestling Federation to welcome to WWF superstars. You go from Hogan to Brett, it goes from welcome to WWE Superstars to welcome to Monday Night Raw. You go from that to Austin, and now you've got Raw is War. You look at anything from 2002 yeah. until now, it's the same fucking mm -hmm. show. Yes, aesthetically, things have changed. SmackDown no longer has a fist. Raw right. no longer has... You know, um, the amount of things that have changed is so minimal and the things that have changed as minimal as they are, are not the types of things that people are having that much of an issue with. There's been no genuine shift in direction. It's still the same thing up until like last year or so. Every show started with a 30 minute promo yep. and, and still like a lot of times now they'll still do the same thing. There's no genuine shift. There's no direction shift. There, it's fucking ridiculous that, like, some people don't even need to watch wrestling to know the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And this guy's gonna come out, and they're gonna stare each other down, and they're gonna go, "Wait for that next week." You need a tonal shift, 
How do you start that? You merge the brands. That's a different story for a different day. <laughs> but you you have to create a new vibe. And this vibe right now that everything is just colorful, Tony. And everything is so lit up. And isn't the Thunderdome amazing because it's lit up? I, I watched um, Backlash, a, a portion of Backlash from this year. Dude, the Performance Center recruits give you a more lively vibe than the Thunderdome because you're like, oh, shit, genuine human reaction. <laughs> but, but, like, like that's, that's one of those things that WWE would totally try to pivot and place the blame on is they would try to go, well, it would be better if we had fans. And you'd go, would it be better? Yes, because it would have more of the reaction. But would it be significantly better? Not as much. Like. And I'm I'm going to compare it to the real world short and sweet. Everybody wants to believe that the clock is going to change on Friday, January 1st, yeah. 2021. And that COVID's done and we're just going to go back out. That doesn't change the fact that this year exposed so many flaws in our society. Mm. Just like nothing that WWE does is you just get fans back and you just reboot WrestleMania the way it was supposed to be this year. It doesn't change the fact that Raw hit its lowest numbers ever and people are just not intrigued in your brand. People put too much emphasis on the most minuscule of things. Oh, well, you'll, you'll see. We'll get fans back because they're really the lifeblood of our product. And, you know, we're a WWE family and it's like, Shut the fuck up. Your show sucks. You know it sucks. Do something because it's not that hard. Right. That's my phrase that I've been using for these past few years. It's not that hard. And we know what the answer is. Get better writers and stop allowing Vince McMahon to say no, but do it the way that we did it before. Because like you said, it's been the same thing for 18 years. And that clearly is what WWE what Vince McMahon as the head of WWE, what he wants, which if that's what he wants and he's willing to let the company suffer because of what he wants, then that's what he's choosing to do. And they can't say anything negative because it's nobody's fault, but theirs. Like, it's so, it's so unfortunate because there's a generation of guys. You can look at Ryback. You can look at Carlito. You can look at anybody, all those names are, are trash now, right? Because they just happen to exist in a generation where, yeah, well, if you couldn't get over it, it was your fault and you're a loser and we're moving on now. It's It kind of goes back to the punk thing, right? Where he's like, give me the main event. No, I'm sorry. Like, we're not giving you the last match. Why? Tell me why so I can fix it. Oh, no, you're doing great. Well, then what the fuck? Give me the main event. Now we can't. They they don't want to acknowledge anything. Well, it's like if. If the writers were better. And if the good writers that are there, which I'm sure that there are, were able to just write things without. OK, well, now it got thrown out and we have to just do something on the fly and we have to do exactly what we're told anyway, they're really not writers at that point. They're just people that are uh, being micromanaged. They're, they're a writing staff, but ultimately there is one head writer that can shit can everything. And all he's doing is he's, he's writing everything. He's just divvying, divvying up the responsibility. Like if I were to say, you know, OK, well, I'm going to have 20 people write up the hot tags, but you all have to write them up this way. It's going to seem like 20 versions of the same thing. But if I were to say, all right, 20 people write up the hot tags of the week, choosing the stories that you want to choose and in the fashion that you want to write them, you'll probably see a wider variety of stuff presented. And if you have one person writing everything, like Vince and or Kevin Dunn are clearly the ones that like the idea of the interviewers holding a microphone saying, so can we get your thoughts on the fact that this person just did this? 
and then the person says something to the camera and then the camera pans over to the interviewer and it's Sarah Schreiber or whatever, just holding the microphone and looking kind of pensive and staring where the wrestler left. Clearly you know, one of those two, if not both, they like that. And you know, what's funny about that is other promotions don't do that. And it's very simple fix. NXT doesn't do it. Michael Corey back to you. Yeah. NXT doesn't do it. Mac- Mackenzie Mitchell I noticed it in particular this week, but I'm, I've been noticing it uh, another times. She'll be like, hey, I'm going to talk to this person real quick. Hey, come over here. Blah, blah, blah. I thought about this. Yeah, but don't you think about whatever like that? Okay, well, that's what their thoughts are. Guys, back to you at the desk. So it's clearly not like everybody in WWE agrees that this is the better, better way of doing it. It's just Vince on the Raw and SmackDown side of things that wants it that way. And that go, goes ahead and proves that's a one detail. If they fix that, that's not going to get people to tune in. But if there's a million little details like that, then you fix a little detail here and a little detail there and you start fixing the whole thing. It adds up like, let me, let me try to wrap this up by asking you this. Is there anything, if you had control, if you could say, do this one thing and it would substantially change everything. And spite it, Outside of just saying, hey, let's let go of Vince. Is there anything aesthetically on the show or within the show that they can do that would make you go, yeah, okay, more of that? There's not one single fix that they can do. And that's what they're going to look for, too. That's the other problem is they're going to look for what is the thing that we can do that can be the quickest, easiest, simplest way for us to do something very quickly to get USA off our backs. And then as soon as that happens, if it happens, because it might not, they're going to go right back to the status quo because they do that every single year. Like we've uh, we've seen that they did the brand split and then the brand split ended because they said, you know what? We're not going to do the brand split anymore. We're going to have everybody across the shows hoping that people would tune in more. And then eventually they said, you know what? We're going to do a brand split again, hoping people would tune in. And then they said, well, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to do this. We've had maybe nine or so company saving directives over the past couple of years that have lasted a few weeks at most and have not helped anything like the wild card rule or the brand to brand invitational or raw underground or the third hour of raw is going to be dark and gritty or the 24 seven championship. By the way, back to that dark and gritty. I feel like this is something that they've probably been saying probably for a year now, but now they're just like, no, the ratings are low. Stop what you're doing. And let's do this. WWE was probably making the argument of, well, it's not that that's a problem. It's this other stuff. And USA is probably like, all right, you can try it. And it, if, if, because I, I don't know if I really trust this to be a thing anyway. If USA is finally putting the foot down, it's because this got to the lowest ever and they were just like, I'm done with it. After 2020, I'm done with it. But it might just be the same as it was before, which is USA goes, guys, come on. And then WWE goes, all right, we're going we're gonna to do this. Here's my fear. Because the other portion of this report says... They're really, really, really hoping that they can do something huge for the Rumble and the Rumble can be like this huge restart. They're going to go. Brock Lesnar's real and gritty and dark and violent. And it'll just be, mm-hmm. let's build the show around Lesnar. We'll just, we'll just sign Lesnar on to a new contract. But this time, we're going to have it to where he appears on three out of four Raws in the month. Yep. <laughs> And then you know what? People won't care after a few weeks because then he'll just be regular shit anyway. So that's like they can't go with the Brock Lesnar thing. It's not going to work. I'm worried also as far as TLC goes that they're going to go with that idea that we were talking about before, which is that the Miz cashes in and he climbs up the ladder and he wins the championship during the match. So that way they end the pay-per-view with what's going on? Tune in to Monday Night Raw tomorrow night to figure out, and then people, some people, will go, oh, I guess I'll watch to figure out what they do. And then the week afterward, they just go back to, okay, well, then that's what they did. Who cares? 
Well, you talk about dark and gritty and TLC, and here's another hot tag, a literal hot tag. They made Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton an Inferno match. It is, yeah. Now that's the only update that we have for TLC is they're calling it a Firefly Inferno match, which... And they're calling it a first time ever. Because they added the word Firefly to it. Nope, I think it's going to be a cinematic match. Well, here's where that question comes in. We've had many Inferno matches. Not many, many, where it's, we've it's had like maybe a, like six or seven. Yeah, but we've had enough that we've had more than a you know one or two. Not as many as like you know six man tags or something. But we've had we've Inferno had matches. Of, we've only had one Ring of Fire match. And they did the Ring of Fire right, and the Ring of Fire was not set your opponent on fire as the Correct. rule. So they haven't said at all what the rule of this I is. I think you have to burn your ass. So I'm going to go out on a limb here, and Wago, if you're listening to this, screw you. I think Edge sets Randy Orton on fire. And I think they're going to go, ah, Edge, fire. Look at that. That's interesting. If it's a cinematic match, they've got a lot more flexibility of doing something like that so they can actually do it safer. If it's not a cinematic match and you have to set your opponent on fire, they have to set Bray Wyatt on fire because how's Bray, uh, Randy Orton going to get on fire? He mostly has just his skin, you know, like they uh, can't he, they can't just like, oh, well, his trunks are going to get on. That's way too dangerous. You know, he can burn his hand, right? The most that they could do is have him burn his. Well, boot. if it's a cinematic match, Edge can just set him on fire. But see, that's that's the thing is, if it's a cinematic thing, they can do some kind of trickery or whatever. But they haven't said if it's a cinematic thing. They haven't said if you have to set your opponent on fire or if it's a regular one in a ring surrounded by fire. Why is it a Firefly Inferno match? Because they wanted because, to name it that. I think it's going to be because Bray Wyatt's like lanterns are going to light the fucking thing. Here's the stupidest thing out of all of it. Why didn't you announce this on Monday Night Raw? I just told you why. And I'm not even being funny. Like, they have an obsession with digital. They mm -hmm. are all digital. They are all like, look at how big our numbers are. It's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, nobody is watching your core product. So unless you plan on saying... Breaking news, WWE Raw is going fully digital, and now it's on our YouTube channel and streaming live on our Facebook. You got a problem because nobody's watching your product. Yeah, and you can't expect people to be following your Twitter account 24-7 for these updates right? And if they're not watching your show. And that, to me, goes against their huge philosophy of the casual fan. I have to do this. It's my job. You have to do this. It's your job. Nobody whose job it isn't to do this is going to be like, oh, man, I got to check the book. Right. Uh, or like WWE talking smack. It's like, no, nobody is no, going to you know do what, that. You know what those people do? And WWE, and this is what I mean by I say WWE is not stupid. They're just stubborn. WWE has to know this, what I'm about to say. They have to know it. If they don't, then they are just completely ignorant and fooling themselves. The people that are more casual, that don't follow everything like you and I do, what they do is they click on the websites that report on those things and read the articles that they're interested in reading because it's the people like us that act as the filter for it that can filter out all the nonsense, bullshit, garbage that WWE wastes time with. Because if you don't watch SmackDown and you say to me, hey, what happened on SmackDown tonight? My go-to response would be nothing. And then you go, oh, okay. And then you go, no, 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 tell me. Something must have happened. I'd go, Street Profits retained the tag titles. Bianca Belair lost to Bailey. Carmella cut a promo about how she'll win at TLC. Kevin Owens kept fighting Jey Uso. Billy Kay teamed up with Tamina and lost to the Riot Squad. And then people go, oh, okay. I'm glad I didn't watch it for two hours. You know what I mean? That's within 20 seconds. I told you everything that happened. If you're interested, you'll watch the match and you'll probably watch it on YouTube because all you'll have to do is click on YouTube and click on the match and that'll be it. And then yeah. that's it. Cause 
nobody's and, gonna watch the bump. And if the, the match is really good, sometimes they do this thing where they upload the whole fucking thing. Right. So now there's even less of a reason for you to have DVR'd the show to watch it. But even if you DVR'd it, you're gonna wait until it's over so you can skip through the commercials because the commercials are a quarter of the show. And then once you skip through the commercials, if it just goes like tonight with the Carmella thing, it went from I think it was like a backstage segment or something to Carmella getting ready to do her promo and them saying the promo's coming up after the commercial break. And then they went to a commercial break and then they did the intro for Carmella and they did a video package and then she started talking for like 10 minutes. So I'm like, all right, you just got 20 minutes out of we're going to talk. Wait a, bit, a little bit. Now we go to commercial. Now we go to a video package. Now we go to whatever. You got 20 minutes out of your show of five minutes worth of Carmella talking, which shouldn't have even been five minutes because at this point, if you're interested in seeing Carmella versus Sasha Banks, you're already going to watch TLC. You didn't need to watch another promo. Nothing that she said was interesting enough to change anything. They didn't change the dynamic of the match. She smashed another bottle over Sasha Banks. She did it last week. Who cares? Nothing changed. It wasn't like we got big news. There's going to be a change to TLC. Stay tuned after the break where you'd go, oh, what are they changing? And then when they come back, they go, all right, everybody, we told you we're going to get to you some news. So Carmella's coming out to say that now the match is a tables match. And it's what I, nothing. So what was the point of it? It was to eat up time and to shove another KFC ad in there. And to be honest, I know Bruce Pritchard will go, you know, but guys like this, you know, they've never booked anything in their lives, and I get it. I do. You know, I, I really do, Tony. But I'm so sick of that excuse. It's a bullshit that's excuse. It, that's all it is. It's another excuse. It's a blame game thing, because you don't have to be have like somebody who's had a whole bunch of experience with something to know when something's bad. I know that I am not a daredevil. I have never done extreme stunt work, but I know if somebody jumps off of a platform and lands flat on their face, I go, well, that's fucking stupid. They screwed that up. And you go, oh, you don't, you've never did a BMX thing in your life. I'd be like, no, but I also haven't tried to and fallen on my ass. You know, like again, the, the food analogy that I use all the time, I always use food because everybody eats food, <laughs> you know? I don't have to be a professional chef to know if somebody overcooked my food. I've gotten steak before from places like Outback where I'm like, you overcooked this. And then they go like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's like, yeah, but but you did. So you overcooked it. And I've gotten, uh, I forget the, the, what place it was. I'm blanking on it now. It just popped in my mind. So maybe I'll be able to think of it later or something. But um, there was some place that I had gotten one time where I had gotten chicken. And it wasn't cooked enough. And it was like a regular, like a Red Lobster or a whatever type of place. Like not just like some local kind of place. But I remember being like, yeah, can you like take this whole thing back and cook the chicken? Because maybe it was Olive Garden. Might have been that. I don't know. Whatever it was, I'm like, this isn't cooked. And if I eat this, I'm going to get sick. Now, I don't need to have worked in the restaurant industry to know that if I eat uncooked chicken, I'm going to get fucking sick. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't need to have booked wrestling and you know worked however many shows to know whether or not low ratings equals people don't like your show. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's I, so... And it's so up your own ass. It's weird. Like, wrestling... Wrestling is this thing that they want everybody to understand and nobody understands that they can still have the exclusivity of saying, well, we're the best, you know, we're, we're the best form of entertainment and we love our fans, but fuck our fans because how dare they try to, you know, it's wrestling when it's good is something that most people can enjoy. I've had people that aren't wrestling fans watch some of the good shows and they've been like, oh, it's kind of fun because it's just like, okay, well, maybe they like a little drama. Maybe they like a little sex appeal. Maybe they like comedy. Maybe they like action and sports and soap opera and whatever. It, they do have the ability to do that. And if you show somebody, for instance, like the Owen Hart and Bret Hart feud just condensed, 
I think that those people, even if they're not wrestling fans, would be like, that's a pretty good story overall. Maybe it's not their favorite thing in the world, but they'd go, that's eh, pretty good. I like it. If you show somebody, you know, like the first three Gargano and Ciampa matches, they might be super interesting. Yeah. They might go, wow, those guys are athletic and entertaining and they know what they're doing. This is fun. And, you know, you show them Undertaker and Mankind at Hell in a Cell and they'll be like, this is crazy. This dude's killing the other guy. My God, I got to see what happens on a regular show. But then if you show them, hey, it's Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus and whatever, <laughs> then they'll go like, well, what didn't they just fight? And you'd go, yeah, they did. And then they go, but this is the eighth time. And they go, yeah. Yeah, I know. And then he'd be like, well, that's dumb. Yeah, and, just. And the biggest thing to let you know that, like, they know, look at the Tribal Chief. Tribal Chief is amazing. They did something new, and wow, it's working. And they got to know that, too. That, like, they have to know when. We even hear reports about this where it's just like, well, they know that they didn't have a really good show, but they decided, well, we'll just get through it. That whole mentality, if we'll just get through it, we'll do it next week, we'll figure it out. And they don't figure it out. And then when next week becomes next month and next month becomes next year, and then next year becomes five to ten years and it's long-term planning or whatever, you can't expect people to invest that much into it. I, I Here's what I think is going to happen. I think Monday Night Raw as one of the last Raws of the year, they're going to go, breaking news. Vince McMahon's going to be inside the Thunderdome. Oh, they definitely will. And he's going to go, look, we're going to have Rhea Ripley here next week, and Brock Lesnar's going to be in the Royal Rumble, and, you know, I'm sick of this. Our truth, give me that 24-7 title. It's stupid. It's bullshit. It's the hardcore title now. You're going to see everything thrown at the wall within the next two weeks, I think. I think that... This coming Monday, they're going to have one hook. Only one. And I think it's going to be something weird happens at TLC, like the Miz thing. And they're going to hope that, God damn it, we just we can't figure anything else out in advance. Maybe that'll get people to tune in. And on Monday Night Raw, they're going to say, next week, Vince McMahon is going to be here and he's going to take charge and he's going to whatever. And just like you said... Vince is going to be in the Thunderdome for the first time ever on Monday Night Raw because for he was the first on time SmackDown. Ever in St. Petersburg, Florida. Right. They're, they're going to do that because the they're obsessed line. with that line. And then Vince McMahon's going to cut a promo about, we know that it's been a tough year. And he's going to cut a shitty promo, too, because it's going to be one yeah. of those ones that like buries well, the fucking... I'm not even talking about his, his delivery. He's going to cover a cut of promo that buries the... The talent. The roster. It's going to be, we know that it sucks. You know, and I'm tired of whatever happened. I'm grabbing the brass. Rip. Yeah. How come nobody yeah. has the ruthless aggression anymore? I want, I want to see stars. I want to see, you know, so uh, this is, this intensity. At the Royal Rumble, Drew McIntyre is going to face Roman Reigns. And then there will be one champion. I don't think they're even going to do that. It wouldn't I, I shock me at all if their idea with this whole potential of the Miz thing, if he goes, that's bullshit and we don't like that. The title has been upheld in abeyance and the Royal Rumble is going to be for the championship or something like that, which now, isn't going to help the ratings because that now, only helps the Royal an, Rumble. As an easy hook for the Rumble, I like that because I do like when the titles online in the Rumble. But... But it doesn't help the ratings because then people go, oh, okay, well, I'll watch the Royal Rumble, which people are going to watch the Royal Rumble anyway because it's the Royal Rumble. You don't need to sell it on anything other than that it's the Royal Rumble, you know? No, so you need to get people to watch Raw, and to get people to watch Raw, you need to get them to understand that you're going to do a better job, and then you actually need to do a better job. That's it. Like, that's all they need to do. And they don't need Vince to go out there and say, hey, I'm sorry, two years ago I apologized, but I really didn't want to do anything. And I figured I would just fair, like toss out some uh, uh, like EC3 and whatever, and that you'd be okay with that, even if I don't push the guy. And then, it, like you said, like Rhea Ripley, oh, she's going to pop up and we're going to get Brock Lesnar back. And then you go, oh, so you went to the let's bring up the NXT people that you don't like 
mind you, because every time the people come up from NXT, you act like they need to learn how to do it the other way, which the reason why they're popular is because they're not doing it that way because people don't like that way, but you like it. So when you like it, that's what you want it to be. And then when you go, well, damn it, people aren't liking what I like. Well, that's that's the argument, you know? Like, <laughs> To be fair, though, I... I would take a 30-minute Vince McMahon promo where he just goes, look, I know I fucked up with Sting, and I know that yeah. it's, it's been shitty. Like, I would accept that to an extent. I would be so much more interested if there was, like, we're going to carve out, like you said, like 30 minutes. Vince McMahon's just going to talk to us. And he doesn't do the company speak. He doesn't pass the blame on to anybody else. He just says, hey, look, I want to talk to you as the leader and the chairman of WWE and you as not the WWE universe, you as viewers and fans. I understand this has been a rough year for everybody. And what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to give you the best that we can give you. But we understand that we haven't been trying to do our best. It's not that the pandemic got in the way. It's not that we didn't have every star available. It's not that the horoscope said whatever. We understand we are not doing our best. And we understand that we spent the past two years telling you that we understand that. So why would you believe us? Well, here's why you need to believe us. We need to do our best because we're in a bad situation right now. And it's are you know we're back uh, against the wall if we don't we're gonna fail so we either do it or we go under and damn it wwe is not going under stay tuned next week i promise you it'll be a better show and then you spend that next week writing a better show and you spend that next week ah. I'm a big sucker for, like, hey, Dynamite did this. As soon as they said, hey, it's a new season, they did new graphics, they did a new uh, promotion spot. Like, those types of things do help. You know? All those little things add up, but at the end of the day, you need those things with better writing because that's what's going to keep people. Because once you do the, oh, look at that, they got a new uh, a new theme. Then the next week you they go, yeah, but that was next the last week. What's what's happening next? You know, right? Like I've changed the graphics on Smartout Moment before. I don't know if anybody noticed on FanboysAnonymous.com. Fanboys has a slightly different homepage right now than it did a couple weeks ago. I'm not gonna act like that's changed the content dramatically. All it did was it made it a little bit easier for people to check out things that aren't just Week and Geek. And if somebody were to go, ah, you didn't change what you do for Week in Geek, I'd go, nope, didn't say that I did. Just made that a little bit better, you know? Now, we will do something different for Week in Geek because we're going to do a podcast about it, which we don't normally do. But, but that... allow me to, to further this by saying I think we should take a page from our own book here. And look, the shows weren't good. And if it's all the same to you, I know it's a popular point of our hot tags, but... I don't want to talk about the shows because we told you the bulk of what happened on SmackDown. Raw wasn't worth a damn. Right. Because we told you the one change they gave and it happened after Raw. So I don't think we need to talk about the TV shows. Yeah, I don't think we need to run down the shows. We don't need to tell you like Riddle be MVP or whatever. It's literally at the very least for this week. Maybe if you guys disagree and you really want us to do the breakdowns, then we will go back to doing it at another time or whatever. But it's just, hey, anything interesting happen? Which nope. we talked about nothing interesting on SmackDown, nothing on 205 Live, nothing on Raw that we haven't already gotten into a little bit. I'm looking at the NXT stuff right now. Kyle O'Reilly's going to fight Finn Balor for uh, the title. I'm sure that'll be a great match. Yeah, I think so. And Tyler Rust did a great job. And it's match against Tommaso Ciampa. I like that. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that was a breakout moment for him. NXT UK? Nothing. 
Yep. Uh, so it's like, well, we're not going to give you a whole breakdown like that. It's going to have to take forever. Because like, and we really don't need to. We want to emphasize these shows aren't worth breaking down that way. Right. And just to prove that I'm not somebody who doesn't, you know, subscribe to his own ideas and whatever. That's why we have the feedback survey up. That is up on the website. It's going to be up until we do the end of the year awards, because that's not only where you can vote on like the host of the year and the best and the worst segment, but that gives you the option of telling me what you think that I can do better. And I really do take that into account. So when people say, I really would like you guys to do more fan ounce tables, then what happens is I get in a group chat with all the people who write and all the people who do the podcasts. And I go, all right, guys, I gave this some thought. This is what people were saying. Then I think that we should try to do this next year because why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? Like that's how things should work. And if WWE puts out these fan council surveys and they say, you know, what are you interested in? And people go, I'm interested in a Keith Lee. And then they go, well, you can't be. And then it's like, well, then, <laughs> then why'd you ask? You know what I mean? Like, well, it's never made any sense to me when somebody says, I want your opinion. And then you give it to them and they go, well, I didn't want to hear that one. You go, you asked for my opinion. Do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Or do you want the opinion? You know? And to that effect, I know that one of the things in the feedback so far was we'd like it if the podcast were a little shorter. So, hey, we knew we ran a little long on that. And we want it to listen to you. So we're well, not here's, going to run other shows. Here's where that comes into play is I've gotten some feedback saying, I want you to do shorter podcasts. And I've gotten some feedback that says go longer. Have they really? Yeah. <laughs> so that's where the more people that talk about what they like and what they dislike or whatever, if that's just a handful of people say, cut them shorter and, you know, say three people say, cut it shorter and 30 people say, do it longer, then you know, we're going to play to the 30 people. And if the reason why not as many people are saying to cut it shorter is because they just haven't filled out the survey, the more people that say that, then we'll go, hey, you know what? Uh, we will cut these shorter. It's just, that's how it works. If, if there's not a two-way street of communication, then it's just guesswork, you know? So even if you think your opinion is not something that would be helpful, say it anyway. Let me know. If you yeah. literally, it could be anything. It could be the type of thing where you're like, I don't like the fact that the uh, the colors are predominantly red and gray and black and white. Maybe you're like, man, it's a shame that you don't have like purple all over the place. I'll listen to it. I might not change everything to purple, but like, I'd be like, hey, maybe I'll incorporate purple and more logos going forward. You know, like it's the simplest thing. Again, the Tony Mango catchphrase. It's not that hard. <laughs> like, more yeah. people fill in about what they like, and then the company or the person or whatever tries to go, all right, I'll, I'll try to make that happen. If it's an unreasonable thing, like if people say, you should do a podcast every 30 minutes, I'd be like, I can't, and that's the end of it. <laughs> but if people were like, oh, man, like I really wish that you would go back to doing the the podcast as like one podcast a week where you record all the stuff you're going to do throughout the week and you just slap three videos in a row. Then I'll try. Yeah. Feedback survey, fill it out. Tell us what you're interested in. Tell us what you're not interested in. And I think that that uh, does it for the hot tags. I think so. I mean, <laughs> Do a quick once over just to see if anything crazy broke. In the meantime, just going to let you guys know, of course, double track, uh, double checking. It's not the word. Uh, double backing on the things I mentioned before. Fanboysanonymous.com. We got stuff coming on there. We're going to be recording a podcast afterward. It's going to basically be the hot tags, but for the geek culture stuff. So if you are interested in the movies and TV shows, we're going to talk Mandalorian. We're going to talk Super Nintendo World. We're going to talk about uh tom cruise going on a rant about how dealing with covid's not all that hard <laughs> we're gonna talk about spider-man cyberpunk we're gonna talk movie theaters or a, a bunch of different things so if you are interested in that check out fanboysanonymous.com hit up the patreon for that because the more support that you guys give us on the monetary side of things for patreon for a smart moment and for 
fanboys, the more that I can dedicate the time to it and the more that I can try to get people to help me learn new things and to try to teach myself new things and to just give you more content and better content because I want to do better. I agree. I also want to do better. Follow Rob as well yeah, all yeah, over the place. Follow me. I, I'm full time at Fightful as of now, guys. So follow Fightful.com, follow Fightful Select, follow me at Dude Felice. Keep uh, saying that you like what I do. If you don't like what I do, let us know. I'm on all these podcasts. I'm on the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast with Callum Wiggins. Check out the episode tomorrow where we go back in time and review the episode after Armageddon 2002. That'll be up around 7 o'clock-ish in the evening. Um, yeah, just follow and click around and Hopefully you enjoy. We got that coming up. We've got the TLC pay-per-view coming up on Sunday. So stay tuned to the post show for that because live coverage will be on smartcomlima.com. And if you want to chat it up with people during the pay-per-view, there's not only the little comment section on the website, but there's also our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash the Mega Maniacs. Start working on your lists for the end of the year awards because that's coming up before you know it, which is very intimidating. And also something to be aware of is next week. This is the breakdown that I've currently got going on. I don't know how things might change because they might, but what my current idea is, is that if Rob is up for it and we're not brain dead and whatever, what we're going to do is either do the hot tags after the Slammy Awards or maybe during the Slammy Awards. I don't know if how we'll, like, we'd be able to work that out, but it's something to, to work on over the next few days and try to figure it out. If it's during, then if you're subscribed to the channel and it's like a live watch along or something along those lines, then you'll get the notification of that. But more than likely, it probably would be afterward, I would assume. And then we're also going to record what is sort of our like a lesser version of the smart cat moment awards, which is going to be based off of AEW. Cause I know that some people have suggested that we incorporate AEW into the smart cat moment end of the year awards. And it's like, well, it's a little hard to do that without factoring in. Oh, I didn't write notes down for the whole year and whatever. So we're going to give you a little taste of it. We're going to talk the best and the worst of AEW in 2020. We're not going to do every single category, especially cause they don't have every category. Like we can't say, what was the best brand in AEW this year? Uh, well, it's Dynamite. Like, <laughs> it's, you well, know. Hold on, Dark has exceeded Dynamite in length. Yeah, that's... And length. And right. Length. So like... it's like, you know, we're not doing that. We're not doing, like, who's the best uh, The show on the WWE Network. They don't have the WWE Network, you know. You, you could probably do a subcategory where you're like, what's the best of all of their, you know, extra shows because they got like brandy roads uh shot of brandy they've got AEW unrestricted they've got all that stuff so if you want to see that you know that's something that's there for the feedback i would tell you right now though shadow brandy is pretty good <laughs> better than uh, anything else so that's happening and then we're going to try to record the end of the year awards over the course of a few different days to make it a little bit easier for us because there's like six hour long podcasts and that's a it's a lot. Uh, I got through them perfectly fine in the past, but I don't want to put it on these guys to have to do that for like a whole day straight. Well, essentially. well you're not you're not human. Yeah, I'm not normal. So it's... also uh, fun fact, tune into Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast to get Callum Wiggins uh, TLC predictions because he does give those on the podcast. Nice. Yeah, that's happening. Eventually, we're going to get into the one to watch in the future endeavors forecast for the beginning of the year. And then who knows what's happening in 2020. And it partially depends on your feedback. So fill out that feedback stuff. Stay tuned to everything that's happening on smartcatmoment.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Follow me at Tony Mango. Follow me at A Mango Tree. Follow me at Fanboys. And all the other kind of things that were happening. We got e wrestling news. We got Bleacher Report. I got a lot of articles I've been writing, and I still have more than I have to work on, which is just. Ah, but they're all coming out there sporadically throughout these next few days and everything. Some of them already have come out, so check them out too. But that's it. That's the end of this episode. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Hot Tags, everybody, and we will see you next time. But for now, this has been another Smart Out Moment. We're being counted out. Bye.